Hi, this is Colleen Parsons with a brief summary of the peripheral vascular system and lymphatic system. We have really already touched upon most of this with what you'll need for this course. Uh, you'll be going into much more detail with peripheral vascular and lymphatic system in your um, MedSearch course next year. So here's part one. Please take time to review the, a lot of your anatomy and physiology, all of your anatomy and physiology, by at least looking at your Jarvis text. And there are some wonderful reminders here uh, on their online program. You really want to have a good working knowledge of what the vascular system is about. Knowing its structure and its function helps the blood get to where it needs to go and then get back to the heart so that it can be freshly oxygenated and rejuvenated, you might say. So we, we end up being very concerned about the extremities, especially the far extremities like the fingers. And we will, uh, one of our assessments is to do a capillary refill uh, by pressing on the finger and seeing how soon that it goes from uh, dark to pink or white to pink. Um, Reynolds disease would be a, a, a problem that you would see for far extremities. Toes are the same way and you can begin to see because of gravity and everything else that is working against us, trying to get that blood back to the heart, the further away from the heart it is, the more difficult it becomes, especially when people age. So making sure that the veins can are free to flow that blood back to the heart is an important piece. Here we are. It's quite a long ways to go from the toes back up to the heart especially if somebody has a, a big impact like diabetes or some other um, process. Autoimmune disease can really affect your organs. So here's immune related organs, your lymphatic system, your tonsils. You can see all of them that would be affected and make an impact on your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system helps keep people healthy, right? Okay. So we want to keep people moving the best that we can. We used to think after people had a heart attack, the best thing would be to put them on bed rest for a long period of time. And we discovered that that made people a lot worse and created a greater risk of mortality for them. Um, we have much better medications now and we understand how to use them better. So we're using low dose anticoagulant medication and keeping them moving the best that we can as a, a prevention to cardiac disease. Culture and genetics continue to play a big role in your venous structure, your arterial structure, and how they operate and how they become um, impacted over time. And there's the end of part one. So I'm going to go right into part two and discuss the uh, subjective data. Uh, leg pain and cramps is a very big problem for some people. Skin changes in the arms or legs, we touched on that a minute ago. Swelling, edema, lymphatic node enlargement, medications, and a history of smoking. Smoking uh, dilates and constricts the blood vessels. So in that constriction, that impedes the blood flow. So you wanna know if somebody has leg cramps, where, how long, uh, burning, aching, cramping, stabbing, did this come on gradually or suddenly? How long has it been going on? Um, does it only happen at night or does it happen when they're in the midst of some activity? How many 
stairs or blocks do they have to walk in order to experience this pain or cramps. So finding out again a full picture for the um, healthcare provider. Does the pain wake you up at night? Do you have any recent changes in exercise? What is actually happening? What, what relieves the pain? Sometimes dangling relieves the pain. Sometimes getting up and walking relieves the pain. So somebody with arthritis in their legs, it's going to be a different kind of pain than the leg pain we're talking about, the muscle pain or the cramps that they might be experiencing. Vascular problems are um, made worse with obesity, diabetes, pregnancy, smoking, trauma, prolonged standing or bed rest, anything that puts a big strain on the vascular system. Skin changes, especially in the far extremities, fingers and toes, arms and legs. Uh, are they bluish, brownish in color? Has there been a color change? Is there an excess of warmth or coolness in any specific areas? Um, that could all make something different. How about leg sores or ulcers? How about foot ulcers or foot pain? Is it bilateral, meaning in both arms or both legs, or is it one? Uh, what brings it on? Has there been trauma? Have, does the patient stand or sit all day? And what relieves it? Uh, uh, we were talking about swelling there. Lymph node enlargement is the same sort of thing. Can you feel any lumps or kernels, any bumps or masses? In the body so that would be your lymph nodes right any recent changes any medications that you're on especially uh, oral contraceptives or hormone replacement and your complete smoking history it's the end of part two so I'll just quickly go into part three here make this one a little bit longer uh, because we don't have an actual skill assessment for peripheral vascular system. Um, we are just, our point here, you could do all of these things, but our point here is just to observe what's going on. And if you needed to use a Doppler, I think you've already learned how to use that in your uh, other class your foundations class. So inspect and palpate the arms of the patients, the legs of the patients, the nail beds, any scars on the hands or feet, capillary refill. We're going to check that. We want that color re to return very quickly. It should be within a fraction of a second. We don't want it to be delayed by more than two seconds. There are several diseases that would cause a delay, and uh, part of which would be cigarette smoking. That's a self-inflicted disease, but there could be edema or anemia, or like I said before, Raynaud's disease. There could be several of them. Radial pulses, we're going to be palpating both of the pulses. That is part of your um, skills, check, skills assessment. So we are feeling for symmetry of all of your pulse points. Okay. And look at where these are. Then we're going to do a modified Allen test, and we'll show you that in class. We're also going to inspect and palpate both legs. We are looking for edema. We are looking for symmetry, and we are looking for any warmth or pain that including on the back side of the calves, especially in the back side of the calves, because that may indicate a deep vein thrombosis. Uh, we are also going to check the femoral arteries. And yes, we are going to check the femoral arteries, but you can do it over clothing because we want to see if somebody doesn't have pulses, let's say you can't palpate pulses in the feet, or in the 
behind the knee is very difficult to palpate. You want to make sure that they have pulses in the femoral area, assuming that that's pushing um, blood down to the toes, or at least that's what we're hoping. In obese people, you're going to have to um, work a little bit harder to get that pulse. You're going to have to have them in a behind the knee, the popliteal pulse. You're going to have to have them in a more of a frog leg position to be able to feel that. And it takes some practice to get that pulse. So right here on the ankle, you're going to be feeling for the tibial pulse, posterior tibial pulse and the uh, dorsalis pedis pulse is right here. And our mannequins, it's a little up here. You can feel it through the shoes. It's quite surprising. Usually you can feel it. We're always, always looking for edema. So there's a very good picture of plus four pitting edema. You can see how deep the fingers go and it takes quite a while for that to return back to normal. Understand your classification, your scale classification. What does that mean? Zero, one plus, two plus, three plus, four plus of edema. And that's kind of subjective. Um, learn whatever your unit is using and learn what the, the best nurses are using for that scale. You, again, are painting a very clear picture for your healthcare practitioner, provider. You also want to um, make sure that you are noting any color changes. Every single time you do a head-to-toe assessment, you are noting the color changes on their skin. You are assessing for DVTs. Um, and edema. And again, we're not going to, you'll see pregnant women in all areas of your practice. Uh, varicose veins is actually a real problem, especially in the third trimester with how the body is structured and the amount of sudden weight that's being applied the pressure that's being put on the lower part of the body, specifically the uh, legs. And because there are many changes in the nails of older aging patients, so it can be more difficult to get an accurate uh, capillary refill assessment on them. Pulses become more difficult to find, so you're going to have to get a lot of practice. So practice, 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 practice makes you um, very skilled at being able to know how hard or how light you need to press in order to find those difficult to find pulses and some abnormal variations. Let's see if there's anything here that I want to talk to you about. Nope. Okay, we're done. Thank you very much and have a good day. This one was quick.